Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all safe and well. Now on today's episode, which might be slightly controversial, um, only in the sense of I know you guys have got really used to seeing uh, my jazz uh, episodes and thank you for joining me on each and every occasion. I really do appreciate that. But um, this is controversial in the sense of I'm departing away from the, my jazz collection on this particular episode. And uh, the reason behind it is, um, recently had a few days off, um, I just wanted to listen to another genre to, you know, pick up the spirit, you know what I mean? Get a smile on my face. Um, those who are in the Northern Hemisphere, um, we're coming out of the gloom of winter, uh, although we still are in. Um, the days are um, becoming more elongated the the actual day times becoming more longer um and i'm truly thankful for that so um in celebration of this um i took from my shelves uh a few of my uh brazilian albums um so it's not for everyone um but i'm still going to defend it um i do feel it's it's jazz mm, jazz adjacent let's call it so there's a lot of themes which I find in, in the kind of Brazilian bossa nova scene, th scene, which I find like really, you know, that, that helps me understand jazz and my like for jazz, um, my passion for jazz. Um, but yeah, I like other genres as well. And I think the more genres that you do have some awareness of, it's just going to give you a, a better appreciation of music in general. So, um, I'm not going to apologize. Um, hopefully you guys will get it as well. Um, so for those who have joined me from the very beginning, you kind of know I do this every now and again. Um, if you've seen previous um, videos where I've like shown you what I've bought recently, um, there's every now and again, there is a Brazilian themed album in there. So that's the preamble. <laughs> Let's get on with it today. So I've got 10 examples of albums which I absolutely just just made me feel so much better for hearing them. Um, it's been some time since I've heard quite a few of them. So yeah, I'm no particular order. I'm going to give you, show the album itself, tell you something about it and why I would recommend these albums to you pretty much. So first out of the gate today, I think is a sensational um, album. I think it came out in 1970. It's by one of the Brazilian stalwarts, uh, Joyce, her name is. And this particular album of hers is called The Visions of Dawn. Visions of Dawn. And it features Nana uh, Vasconcelos and Maurizio Maestro. So, yeah, let me show you that one. And that's the reverse side of it. So, on this particular album, just really, really nice. I mean, it's... All the albums I'm going to show you today are within a certain, they're more of the traditional bossa nova Brazilian sound. Now you may say to me, well, do you speak Portuguese? No, I do not. But that's not the point. The point is, do I like what I'm hearing? So there's music from the around the world in my collection, which I have no idea actually what people are saying, but I like the sound of it. And that's good enough for me. So hopefully... You feel the same. It's just about the music. Don't try and put extra layers of complication on there where it doesn't need to be. So yeah, this is a delightful album. And what I like about Joyce is I've got two or three of our albums, a few on CD as well. Um, but most of our albums, you might find the one really outstanding track, maybe two. This particular one, it's got three, four, five bangers on here, which are just absolutely just, you know, just, you know, gets the shoulders shuffling. This is ideal music for cooking, uh, background music if you're having a dinner party. Um, for those who iron and don't use dry cleaners, again, this is, you know, it, it just, if you're reading a book, say, for example, it's just a lovely sound. I, I can't recommend this album highly enough. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Joyce is an absolute stalwart of the Brazilian scene. So if you've never heard her stuff before, please look out for it. Um, you're in for an absolute treat. But like I said, it's a 
I'm going for albums on this particular occasion of a particular Brazilian sound. It's not the, the kind of psychedelic side. It's not the, the disco side. This is more along the traditional elements. So I'm half assuming that you do know about Brazilian albums already. You, you know an Elsa, Elsa Suarez, you, you know uh, Ilis Regina, you know Astrid uh, Gilberto, you know all those already. I'm taking that as, as red. I'm just going to show you 10 albums, which if you've got those ones and you wanted to dig deeper, this is perhaps an avenue that you could perhaps go down. So, Joyce, and the album's called Visions of Dawn. Absolutely stonking. The second one today absolutely has me in stitches. Um, every time I see the, the, uh, the cover, it just puts a smile on my face. This guy is a fashion hero to me. And there's people out there who will smirk and go, yeah, we've seen your actual dress sense. It's awful. I'm not even going to fight you on that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. Um, but yeah, this, is, this, this guy for me just rings. It just oozes class and the album itself is an absolute stonker it's a self-titled album by a gentleman called emilio santiago and there you go how cool is that yeah that's coolness personified i'm loving it so again um, and i'll show you the reverse side yeah just to, yeah the guy's just you know let's do double time with <laughs> so um what i like about this album as well um certain genres are for whatever reason, um, they tend towards the female or the male vocal sides of things, or performers tend to be male rather than female, and vice versa. Certainly with my Brazilian collection, I've got overwhelmingly female artists. They just, for the genre of music, it, it's the, the, the feminine voice just seems to click with me it tends to resonate with me far better with the female voice than with the male but there are exceptions to the rule and Emilio is one of them he's he's got his his voice is so rich it's 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 kind of seductive as well it's like mm, it's, there's a certain growl to it but not overpowering but it's, it's it's not like a Teddy Pentagrass or a Barry White you know it's, it's not that kind of thing but there is an element of mm, yeah <laughs> this is, it, you just gotta hear it for yourself so again um classic uh brazilian tunes i mean this is not from the like most of these tunes on here if i remember rightly are not necessarily from what we would consider the brazilian songbook um they are original compositions but yes it's got that sound you can almost smell the Smell Rio de Janeiro, the Copacabana beach when you listen to the, this particular album. I just think it's sensational. And again, if you've never heard it before, never heard of this gentleman, check him out. If you like, if you think you're going to like the Bossa Nova sound. So, yeah, I'm just super pleased to have this one. Yeah. Uh, the next album is an album I purchased on one time of hearing it, uh, bought it. Uh, listened to it once more then didn't listen to it again and I regret that um, it's by uh, what is her name Josie de Oliveira Oliveira and the album's entitled A Musica Seculo yeah so quite a few of you might have seen this album um, in the wild and not taken a chance on it I would say you've done yourself a little bit of a disservice if, you, if you're interested in the bossa nova sound and now what makes her quite unique is um her particular bent on on the bossa nova scene is is to more engage with not the brazilian songbook but local folk tales um store indigenous stories um Say, for example, I mean, I'll give you a North American version. Say that, you know, you was to sing a song in regards to Pocahontas, that kind of thing. Um, she does a similar thing, but from the Brazilian narrative, the Portuguese narrative. So lots of folklore tunes. Um, there's the odd political one, but it's mainly folklore, poetry. Um, it's done in an acoustic guitar setting as well. So this is lovely stuff. Um, again, it just put a smile on my face. It's um, it's just a warm and embracing. It's it's a 
it's an inclusive album. It's, 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 it draws you into it. It's immersive. It's a journey in and of itself. So super pleased to get it. Um, I've, when I first got it, it it's like it, it was in the wild quite a bit. You can find it in quite a few places. Now it's more scarce on the ground. So if you do see it, or I say listen to it first, see if it's to your taste. Do you want to take that particular journey? Now, if you find it's to your taste, I'm sure you will find it. It's just gone up in price, basically, because of scarcity. You know how it works. So, But as a, a journey in Brazilian folklore and bossa nova, just just real nice real nice i can't yeah this is why it's on this particular list because i i recommend it heartily to you so there you go that's uh josie de Oli, de oliviera and uh, a musica seculo de joycey yeah there you go really odd imagery it's quite funny so that's the third one the fourth one today is one of my all-time favourite uh, Bossa Nova albums or Brazilian albums from a particular era. Um, and this is, this is the enigmatic, the elusive uh, Nora, Nara Leo. And I'll show you it. Hopefully you can see that. And that's the reverse side. So yeah, this is a fantastic album. Um, so uh, Nara herself, um, she's legendary status in the Bossa Nova scene. Um, she was also politically active as well. So a lot of the tunes on here, if you just take it at face value, they just sound like really captivating uh, Bossa Nova sounding tunes. But the underpinnings of these tunes there's quite a few which have a political upright well elements to them and they do call for social change within uh, brazil so there's a no it works on two levels the superficial side is it sounds great and on the other side it's kind of like well this is a statement piece as well this is you know it's, it's not is it revolutionary i'm not sure because it's kind of like, it, when I think of the term revolutionary and listen to the sound of this, they're kind of like, not contradictory, but they, well, maybe that's what I do mean. Um, but yeah, there's lessons to be learned on here in terms of delivery of, you know, vocal performance. Um, there's just, it's just a great production, this particular one. Uh, super pleased to have got this. I, I know you can still get it out in the wilds. I'm sure the original copies go for silly money, um, but I'm just super pleased to have this one. Um, yeah, she's just a unique talent. Um, have a listen to it for yourself and see if you, you know, like as, as I keep saying, if you think the Brazilian sound is a sound that you wish to pursue, I, I think there is, this is a really good launch pad for it. And you, as I said, you can take it on two different levels. You can take it on the superficial, in the sense of, I just like the way it sounds. Or if you get really deep into it and you do know a bit of Portuguese, you kind of will get another you know, level of understanding as to the social conditions which brought this album into existence. So yeah, super album. I'll show you the reverse side as well, just in case you're curious. There you go. Right, the next album. Um, I'd never heard, you know, I was getting into my Bossa Nova sound and, you know, I had got my basics. As I said, I got my Ellis Regina and all those kind of artists. Um, the Astrid's, the Sergio Mendes, I was doing all that kind of stuff. And I came across this particular artist, never knew anything about her until I actually listened to the album. And it seems like, she's kind of like the missing link in the sense of she's in indigenously in brazil she's known and she's a big name but she didn't seem to have the international acclaim that loads of other female vocalists from brazil of that era got and i'm not entirely sure why that is i I've, you know I, I probably need to research it more i'm just super glad to actually have this particular album in my collection and it's anna Mazan Mazotti Anna Mazotti. And it's a self-titled album, I believe. There you go. 
hopefully you can see that yeah so yeah this is her performing yeah and that's the reverse side so you can see that she she's all, she's a performer who could fill stadiums um she was definitely known um see if i can work out when this album was originally released no can't see it for the moment but yes um what i do like about it again uh, this particular album is more along the traditional lines of uh, the bossa nova Brazilian sound. And yes, if you do like a Astrid Gilberto, that, sound, that kind of sound, she's certainly in that category. Um, well, certainly this album is. And it's an absolute peach. Um, it doesn't necessarily um, go by the usual Brazilian songbook standards. It's departing from that. It's got original tunes in and of itself. Um, I just think it's a fantastic work. Now, when I bought this one, it, she had a, another re-release um, of further material. But I just, you know, obviously I could have got both if I wanted to. But I really, this particular album really resonated with me. I really found it super enjoyable um it's 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 one that i've i'm so glad that i've taken the well i had time off work to have a really good listen to this again and rediscover what i fell in love with in order to to purchase the album i just think it's an absolute joy i think it's so under appreciated it's almost criminal <laughs> that this lady is not given the international acclaim that she rightfully deserves so, uh, Anna Mazzotti, and yeah, self-titled album. If you like your Brazilian, um, go for it. Yeah, I'm, I can't recommend this highly enough. Now, the next album is by an absolute powerhouse in the Brazilian scene. And um, I had heard of him... Um, He's featured on so many great artists or great albums. He's been a feature of those albums. And I didn't, I was kind of dreaming that one day I'd come across his own work as, you know, under his name, um, just to give it a real good listen to and see if he, if he's as good under his own name as he is with other, what have been part of band member of other big names, kind of like, uh i'm trying yeah I'm, i got so confused with myself there i kind of even forgotten what i was going to say but the, the essential point is is like um can he hold up the standard from where he's contributing as a musician in a particular album great album um can his individual work stand up on its own and yes it can and the person i'm talking about is suvesa i believe you were pronounced s-i-v-u-c-a so i think it's sorry of a Suvusa, yeah, I think Suvusa it would be. So look at him; he looks like an absolute. He looks like one of Tolkien's characters. Um, he looks like a gnome, and I think they mention it on this particular album. The the term gnome is really unfair. So Father Christmas, stroke gnome, stroke Tolkien, the character. But this dude is unbelievable um, in terms of his. As a musician, the amount of instruments he can play to a high level um, where each of the instruments he, he actually can play, he's so good, he could just be hired to play that particular instrument in virtually anybody's band who was in Brazil of that time. So whether he's playing guitar, accordion, whether he's playing flute, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like they're going to phone him up. He's getting that phone call like, yeah, come down to the studio kind of thing. So um, this is his album. I'm trying to see. 1973 was... I'll show you the back of it as well. So this originates from 1973, not this particular copy, but um, the original album in and of itself. And yes, um, as soon as this one was released, I made a... a you know, I just had to have it and it didn't matter about how much it was going to cost me. I just needed it. it and I had listened to it in part. But um, as I said, I've, I've had a few days off. I've got to listen to it. Excuse me. And um, I cannot deny the genius of this particular gentleman. Um, it's just fascinating how good he is. 
and the the again it, it's it's that copacabal the sound it's it's traditional bossa nova as i know it this is just encapsulated encapsulates it it's um i'm almost tongue-tied to, to describe how good this is it's it's just a beautiful piece and again for those who are thinking about going down the bossa nova route i can't recommend this one enough so it does have brazilian standards on it so it's tunes that you you probably are aware of but he puts his, his his garnish on them and the garnish is unique enough that even though you might you know you're going to be familiar with that tune it's like it's, it's the reimagining of the reimaginative Mm. the reimagining of under his terms of what these tunes are really will blow your mind it's um it's just a lovely journey through music it really is so just to give you an example um who you know i'm just trying to think of which there was a particular tune on here oh uh, i think it was porteo p-o-n-t-e-i-o classic brazilian tune i've got quite a few different artists doing that that particular tune that particular brazilian standard his version it's just unbelievable it really it's just fun it's just it's just skipping it's it, it just it, it it kind of just takes me back to my childhood not that i was listening to these kind of tunes at, you know when i was like you know pre-teen but it just brings me, you know, it, it kind of invokes images in my mind which are wholly pleasant, um, a carefree time. That, that's the genius of his work. So, again, that's enough enthusiasm about him. Um, yeah, you're in for a treat when you listen to this one. So give it a go, see what you think, um, and comment down below if you agree or disagree with me. So there's that one. How many we got left? Uh, one, two, three, four. So that was the sixth one. The seventh one today, again, is an underrated album. But I feel um, it's one of those that I bought once again. Listen, you know, I knew what I was buying. Um, and I don't tend to buy things that I'm, you know, I'm taking chances on. I tend to know that I want it. And this one, again, it's, as I, as I said at the beginning of this, this video, I've, picked particular albums which convey the traditional if there is such a thing a you know the traditional copacabana bossa nova sound um, but here you're going to get it with acoustic guitars under the gentleman called werther or werther depending on you know where his family comes from it's going to be spelt you know wer or the i'm not sure which um yeah super nice so this is on the acoustic side of things um it's just an absolute delight this one once again just like the suvesa it's um it's just it's not painfully delight but it, it i can just imagine that oh, well, you know i can imagine you guys out there you know when the you know the sun you know on a balmy hot day and you know you've got some people around for dinner or whatever and you just want to put on a couple of sounds which are you know not going to interrupt the conversation because you know it's it's a catchy pop tune type thing but you just want the flow of things to go nicely and it's just like you've got the background of just really subtle yet sophisticated sounds this delivers um let me just see if i can so yeah this is definitely a 70s album um yeah it's a gatefold one as well i can't bother to take it out of there but um certainly um it's an absolute treat so again if you're interested in the bossa nova sound um you kind of want to get the the core elements of that in your collection i would say give this one a go you, you can't really go wrong and again, he's really underrated as well. So, you know, if you've got people coming around and they do know some, you know, they do know a bit of music and you put this on for them, they go, what the hell is that? Who, who, where did you, how did you discover this person? Now, you don't have to say it was me who told you about it. You know, I, I don't need to, but in the back of your mind, you know, or before you go to bed and before you cross yourself, you go, thanks, Lewis. Thanks very much. Now, I'm going to say to you, it's all right. That's what I'm here for. 
sort of part of, sort of part of the community spirit so yeah give it a listen see what you think um i know you're going to enjoy it if you do like the bossa nova sound so three left right the next one i just yeah it's it was an, it, again it's one of those albums that i saw it was on the right label with the right names um and yeah i just yeah it just mm. so this is vinicius and odette lara and it's on the elenco label so like phillips um and there's a few other ones from the brazilian house of you know great sounds elenco is one of their big labels over there so pretty much anybody who's who is anybody has been on that label at some stage pretty much so um this particular album full of sophistication so what i quite like about this one is um all tra alternate tracks are either female vocal led or male vocal led and the production value is so high on this album it, it's for its era it is quite it's quite funny um let's see if i can pick out if i can find when it was originally released now i can't see it off the top of my um but yes it has that quintessential sound it's again truly underrated um it should be in more people's collections um but it may just be a case of people just don't know that it exists um i at one stage i did see these in the wild um i haven't seen one of these in ages but if you can get your hands on it, I really do recommend it. I just think it's a level of sophistication. Not to say that the other albums that I've shown you already weren't that, but this is kind of, it's knowingly sophisticated and there's nothing wrong with that. It, it delivers what it says it's going to do. Um, I, for one, just, again, the smile on my face when I was listening to this, re-listening to this album, after, you know, probably a year, year and a half of not listening to it, um, just put a smile on my face. And I'll try and leave links down below for all these albums so you can hear them from yourself and see what you think. Um, but yeah, if it's not in your collection and you like Bossa Nova, I think you should really consider this one. So there you go. This is Vinicius and Odette Lara. So yeah, like I said, alternate male, female vocals for each track. Just superb. So into the final two. And these albums were in no particular order of preference or anything. It's just that these were the albums that I was listening to and I was super glad to revisit them. The next one is by... Uh, right, it's... La Nuva Onda del Brasil by Luis Essa of the Tambor Trio and La Fim Familia Sangrada. So for those who are familiar with the channel will probably recognise that cover and how I just, I just love it. I love, I, A, I like the way that all the actual musicians are positioned in this video. I mean, in this photo, it's not the best photo. Um, it, it's it's the, of a time where the actual focusing wasn't great and i'll show you the reverse side as well um but this album is an absolute joy it's just fun 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 it's okay it's it's definitely in the the ballpark of some of sergio mendes work um and i'm not gonna uh, does sergio outdo him mm -hmm. The, the, it's to do with familiarity of hearing material rather than anything else. I think they're operating at the same at the same level. It's just that I've heard Sergio Mendes's work on a more familiar basis than I've heard this particular album by Louis Essa. But this is gorgeous. My goodness, this is fun. This is literally sand between your toes. You've got your beach shorts on. Yeah, you know what? You're getting a bit old now. And, you know, the tummy's a bit more distended than when you was in your prime. But you know what? We're just going to get on with that. So um, as long as you're not wearing budgie smugglers, that's fine. So, yeah, you're walking down the beach and, you know, you, you may have a mojito or some other cocktail in your hand as well. Meanwhile, you're strolling along. 
you might be listening to this at the same time on your whatever music device or it's just in your head this is absolutely sensational this is as fun as of all the albums that I've, i'm going to be showing you today um this is probably the one which is the most fun out of all of them um it's just absolutely superb i can't tell you enough how much fun it was um but yes uh it's probably silly money for this now probably um i wouldn't be surprised if you do see it i of course give it a listen to see if it's to your taste but um for me it's i'm super glad i got it um hopefully you guys can get a hold of a copy at a reasonable price hope i do hope that for you because this is something which i i do believe more and more people should even if you don't like if you've got two you know two or three bossa nova albums in your collection i want this to be one of them just for your sake and you know just in terms of musical appreciation i would like if this album was one of them i rate it that highly so there you go and the last album today, again, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm just going to tell you some of the people who are on it before I tell you who's on it. Uh, uh, Hermeto Pascal on uh, piano and harpsichord. Suvesa, who I've just shown you eat earlier, was on the guitar. Flora Pirum is on vocals. Uh, and Ron Carter is on bass. And the actual artist is Eto, and the album's called Natural Feelings. There you go. So it's kind of like, um, I'm trying to remember who it's, it's not Hieronymus Bosch, but it's, it's that kind of, mm, no, because this is more composite image, so I'm really not sure. But there's something about Hieronymus Bosch's work which kind of gives me a similar kind of visceral feeling as when I'm looking at this for whatever reason. And that's the reverse side of it. So, um, high-end Brazili Brazilian bossa nova, high levels of sophistication and musicianship. This is just a... Mm, this is... I'm not saying it's the best album out of all of these, but I'm just saying this is absolute class. This is, this is different level. Um, if you don't have it in your collection um, already... And you've got, like I said, I'm assuming that you've got certain things in your collection already. You've got your Astrid, you've got your Sergio, you've got, you know, you might even have a Jose, Jose Feliciano, although he's not really in this, you know, he's not really under this umbrella. Um, but yes, you want to pursue your knowledge of the Brazilian scene um, with a certain sound. Again, I can't highly recommend this enough. It is absolute astonishing the musicianship on display here it's just yeah it's just top level um so not necessarily brazilian standards on this because you will find that in other works of his of airto um and yes his contribution to countless albums just like um not only hermeto but um also Cervesa and Ron Carter, they've been part of, you know, all sorts of albums, same with Flora, his wife, it's, um, it, it's just, it, it's kind of like all the kind of sidemen or side musicians from other Brazilian groups and iconic tunes were all put together for this one album, and it doesn't let you down, this is a super powered Brazilian album, um, again, I can't recommend it enough. If you think you like the sound of Bossa Nova, this is one which really is going to float your boat. Um, you're going to have to do a bit of listening with it in terms of these are not necessarily familiar tunes to you. They may not be, but you will instant re rec instantly recognise the class on display here. So again... Um, I'm kind of like super excited for you guys out there. The 10 albums that I've shown you, um, I think are really going to, if you were going down the, um, the Bossa Nova line and you didn't, you've never seen these albums before, I'm just really happy for you because you're going to hear things for the first time. And 
I'm just I'm kind of partially jealous as well because I found these al- albums just mind blowing and the scope of what they're trying to do. Um, the standard is that high. So, as I said, this has been 10 albums. I'm not saying it's the best of the best of my collection, but there's a, quite a few of them which are super up there. And I would recommend them to anybody who's interested in the Brazilian bossa nova scene. Um, you, you just can't go wrong with any of those 10 albums. Um, you're going to get so much enjoyment out of them. And yeah, I, I'm just super pumped for you guys. So um, that's enough of my meandering for today. Um, I will try and leave links down below for each of these albums so you can hear the tracks for yourselves. Please, um, don't be afraid to comment. Um, let me know whether you agree or disagree with me. But I'm going for a particular sound and time within Brazilian music. Um, I'm not necessarily branching out from there. I'm not, as I said, I'm not trying to do the psychedelia side or the uh, disco side, both of which I've got a keen interest in. Um, but that's the rabbit hole. I'm just trying to keep you around the... <laughs> This this the, the the rim of things that you know there is you know like Alice in Wonderland there is a a deep hole in which you can get into, um, but I'd say you know if you're new to the genre or you hadn't really given it much thought before, have a listen to these ones first and see if you want to take those steps into the further greater body of Brazilian output. So um, until the next episode. Um, Please look after yourselves. Stay safe. It's been an absolute pleasure to just ramble on at you guys again. Um, thank you very much. For those who are new to the channel, thank you for uh, paying a visit. For those who have been around for a bit longer, thank you for your continued support. It really is appreciated. So until the next episode, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Bye-bye.